future wise mm-hmm. of see Caterham Cater Racing is slightly independent, I guess, from the road cars, but with everything going electric and all that sort of stuff, Caterham moving forward, it seems like in a little bit of a difficult position. I don't think so. We're probably no different to the rest of the car industry in that respect, um, in that EVs are very, very expensive to make. So they are, whilst they're more expensive to buy currently, they are artificially cheap. Now, if you'd said to me three years ago, will there be an electric Caterham? I probably was, you know, very silly. It'd be jumping on the bandwagon. I think the world's moved a a long way since then, or in a very, very short period of time. Uh, We will look back in time, I think, and thank Elon Musk for it as well. Tesla has made electric cars not just acceptable, but desirable in in a very short period of time, you know, much quicker than they otherwise would. But one of the nice things about being here is that um, we get to experience other bits of the industry. We sit on industry bodies and um, some technology um, boards, all sorts of things. Uh, And whilst we're not necessarily playing an active part, we're absorbing all this information all the time. Mm. Uh, And we get to drive some prototype electric vehicles too. And electric catering is a a, a really interesting concept. When you think about driving... uh, a car like that on track, I think your mind automatically switches to an automatic. Well, I've lost my gears. It won't be as good. Yeah. It's not like a sequential. Yeah. It'll be like an automatic that's choosing the gears for me. But it's not. With an electric motor, you've got 100% of the torque all of the time. So as soon as you put your foot on the throttle, it responds in exactly the way you want it to. Yeah. So it, I'd say it's, it's almost like someone being, you're in the perfect gear all the time. Yeah. So if you drive one on track, you drive a track focus EV car, they're not very many. I have had that experience, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, you find that actually it's more like driving a go-kart in that you've just got two pedals and yeah. you're, you quickly just start braking with your left foot, which if you've been racing radical, you're probably left foot braking already. Yeah. Um, do some left foot. So you end up just having your two feet over the pedals and you've got go and you've got stop. And you're focused on just that and steering. And you, th- you think back about gears, you're not missing anything. That's just an inconvenience to get you where you want to go. Yeah. And the, the drive experience in many ways becomes a bit more pure. So I think that an, an electric Caterham could actually be an amazing car to drive. Mm. We would love to do it. We'd love to project, uh, push that project forward. The problem is um, just the cost at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, they're, they're prohibitive um, to make it a, commercial, a commercially viable yeah. Um, product so uh, you talk about the bill of materials of the car all the parts that go up to make it the general industry acceptance is on an ev 50 percent of the cost of all the parts that go up to make an electric car is just the battery alone okay yeah so presumably with that though because you're let's say most caterums are about 500 kilos mm-hmm. if you were to do an electric caterum like with you know your power plants you don't need a massively powerful engines and you wouldn't need massive battery packs as well. Like you wouldn't need a 100 kilowatt hour big pack pack that you might get in a Tesla or something because you're only moving a lighter weight. A lighter I guess weight. it depends on what that, because the motors are going to, still going to be quite heavy and quite big. And then the power pack is big. Well, the battery pack is big, heavy, I guess, as well. Yeah, there's, there's no getting away from um, the weight being an issue. And our product is is built on being lightweight. You know that that, that um, pays dividends across the board with it. But you're right. We probably only need something like a 40 kilowatt hour battery, and a range that's around 150 miles is what people get on the petrol tank already. Yeah. And most journeys are just a little day out or just going somewhere and then recharge, and that may well be acceptable. And likewise, performance wise. EVs are going to make uh, 0-60 kind of irrelevant. Yeah, because they're all the same. <laughs> they, they are. It's, uh, how fast do you want to get to 60 and we'll just reduce the range accordingly and go as fast yeah. as like, you know. Um, so it just comes back about the experience again. And we say, well, if you can get 60, 60 miles an hour in, in five five seconds, something like that, like you can now in a, a super-powered yeah. car, that's fast enough for, for everyone all the yeah. time. You know, Apart from that one time you want to be blasted back in your seat. Yeah. And as long as you can get to 100 miles an hour or so, that's probably more than enough. So that, that's my, my, my personal opinion is it doesn't need to be mind shattering in terms of um, actual outright performance. It yeah. just deliver the same experience in, in performance terms as a, a moderate seven and you'll enjoy it. But actually, I think you could actually make a better car. 